Hello, I'm Russell Saad. Welcome to today's webinar. It's on real-time inventory visibility, why retailers need it, and how Westenacher delivers it with SAP Customer Activity Repository. I don't know if you've used the GoToWebinar tool before, but if you haven't, or if you have, please note that there is a small box marked questions. This is for the Q&A session. If during the webinar you have any questions, please post them here and I'll address them after the webinar. We'll have enough time, so please make use of it. Now, the Customer Activity Repository, CAR, is a fairly wide topic. Well, actually, there's an awful lot of different topics to do with CAR. The one we're going to talk about today is focused on one of its most basic, fundamental and important uses, to give inventory visibility with online article availability in real time. But let me take a step back. One of the things I'm going to be talking about here are omnichannel services. So let me begin by explaining what I mean and why it's so important and difficult to deliver them. I can then illustrate this with a simple example. I'm going to take a, a local retailer and show you a day in their life and how we could really do with inventory visibility. Once we've got that out of the way, I'll look into SAP CAR in a bit more detail. I'll give you an overview of how it works and where it could fit within your existing retail landscape. And I can then wrap up by showing you what we've been doing with SAP CAR at Westermacher, giving you a quick introduction to our latest demo system. So what do we mean with omnichannel services? Well, traditionally, retailers have treated sales channels completely separately. A retailer may have its own brick and mortar stores, but it may also have an outlet and it may have a web store. These would have been separate. If you as a customer were to buy something in your local high street store, the web store wouldn't know about it and vice versa. The IT systems themselves were siloed. So any purchase made in one channel was in that channel. It was unique and separate. As people have become more internet savvy, we deal with cross-channel. In this case, a customer, let's call her Laura, can place orders from any channel. She could go into the web store online, buy something and collect it in store or something she's bought in the high street, she might wish to return to the online store a bit more conveniently. In this case, the IT systems have to be linked together and we start talking as retailers about services such as click and collect, order from store, order to home, this is cross-channel but that's not actually very ambitious of us. Where we need to go is omnichannel, because when a customer interacts with us, they see us as a retailer, they see our brand name. They don't see, oh, it's their web store, it's this store in Mannheim or Heidelberg, they see us, and they take it for granted that when they buy from us anywhere, through any means, we recognize them and we make it smooth, we make it transparent. It no longer matters. They can order from anywhere, pick up from anywhere, mix and match. They're one customer, one retailer. And for this, we need to make our IT systems far more integrated. We need to have a 360 degree view of our customer. And this is difficult. There's an awful lot of data. Take the example of Laura again. She might be a long-standing customer of us, but when she is interacting with us, how is she doing that? 
She could be writing emails to our customer care team. She could be buying in a brick and mortar store. She could be buying online. She could be buying on the app on her mobile device. She could be also Instagramming the latest thing she's bought from us. She could be posting about us on Facebook. She could have a loyalty card. And all of these are great, valuable sources of information about Laura and her buying behavior. And we need to get on top of this. We need to understand it. We need to bring this information from all these different sources and all of these different separate IT systems onto one platform. So we've got it in our hands. Because in the case of Omnichannel, every time Laura buys something from us, we can treat it as a unique journey. She could order from the store, she could order online, she could have it shipped to the store, she could have it shipped to home, she could collect it from anywhere, she could pay by any means, and if she's dissatisfied, she can return the item to us also by any means. And this has to be integrated. It must be one process, one experience. Now, what does this have to do with inventory visibility? Well, let me come to our example. Let me take the local branch of a large electronics retailer. I am sure you can imagine a store chain like this. They've got branches throughout the country. You know them. You buy there regularly. They've even got an online store and you make good use of it. But let's just focus on one store. I'm going to imagine it's in my local town, Heidelberg. The shop hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday to Friday. The main delivery time is 7 a.m. So we've got a first replenishment run from the local distribution center an hour before the store opens. That's the main one of the day. And to make things easy for us, let's assume that the local DC is close enough that we have got a regular replenishment run at midday. Now it's Monday. It's the first day of a new special offer. We've got a robotic vacuum cleaner that we're selling with a heavy discount. And we've had an advertising campaign leading up to this the last week. So not only do we have a store manager who is keeping an eye on the sales, he's going to have, oh, he's got a tablet to hand. He's got live reports from our S4 HANA ERP system. So he can see the stocks. The S4 HANA knows, graphed, and he can do his drill downs. And on the other hand, we have a marketing team at head office who are keen to follow this promotion and find out how it's doing. So let's get started. The day begins 7 a.m. The ERP system records someone checking off the first replenishment run. We have now got 100 units of this robotic vacuum cleaner in store. 8 a.m. The store opens and our store manager with his tablet in hand is keen to find out how business is going because between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. we've had surging crowds. We've had the first people coming in and people have been checking out and he is sure he is seeing people buy the robotic vacuum cleaner. But when he checks his reports, he sees he's still got 100 units in stock. Now the replenishment run from the local DC happens at midday. It delivers another 50 units to us. This is signed off and checked in on our Fiori apps. And indeed, the ERP system now knows we have 150 in stock. And this despite the lunchtime crowds already surging in. So clearly the store manager is seeing this thing looks to be popular, but our reports are still showing us this single reality. The problem is they don't know about the sales. The ERP systems are recording the stock. They won't know about the sales until the POS system, the point of sales system, is collected, collated, and cleansed, and then transferred some point tonight. 
So despite the fact that by 5 p.m. we've actually sold out, the systems don't know anything about this. And this isn't only a problem for our store manager, it's a nuisance to the marketing team. They're trying to find out something about their campaign taking place, but they're not going to know about the sales until tomorrow. Supposing, however, we had a real-time system. Supposing we could see these real-time sales and therefore have real-time stocks. In this case, our store manager could be following the reports, as could the marketing team. They could, and if you look at our graph here, they could find out that as sales take place, our stocks are going down in the store, as we would expect. And so by a replenishment run at midday, our store manager, and indeed the marketing team should have realized, our projections were wrong. This campaign is going far better than we expected. So if anything, we're not replenishing this vacuum cleaner fast enough. And so by 5 p.m., we've realized that not only have we sold out, but we're missing out on the evening crowd. There's still a good few hours in which we could be making heavy sales and we are losing out. And this is a vital piece of information. This is where CAR can actually bring us further. If we see this, we'd have had a chance to either, early on in the morning, do a last minute change to a replenishment run. It might have let us think at 5 p.m., surely we should have had another replenishment run by now. Maybe head office following the campaign could have organized something. If nothing else, head office has now got the chance to do something about these sales tomorrow. Otherwise, with an old fashioned system, we wouldn't have had enough time to react. We'd already have been sending out the fleet in the morning before the marketing team could have seen the first reports of the day and realized that we were under replenishing. So this gives us a chance to do something about it. Besides which, if you're the marketing team and this is your new campaign, it is very different to see this happen in front of your eyes than to see something graph the next day. This is real. That's history. So this is the big deal with a normal reporting system, with a conventional POS data mart, we're always seeing what happened yesterday, not what's happening now. And because we're reacting to what's happened in the past, we're reacting too late. We're reacting a day or two too late. And in retail, a day or two too late is critical. So with the car platform, we not only see our sales as they happen, but we see our stock change. And that's the really important thing. And that gives us a chance to make changes particularly with replenishments. Now that was a simple channel. Let me, however, make this omni-channel. Let us go back to example of Laura, our customer. Laura, like most people, is at work this morning, Monday morning. She already knows as a long-standing customer of ours because she receives her email campaigns, that this robotic vacuum cleaner is going on sale and she'd love to buy one for Christmas. Now, she doesn't want to risk trying to get to the store later in the day. Who knows, it could have sold out. She doesn't know this. She wants to make certain of this. She also doesn't want to order it online to her home. It's the week before Christmas. That's a little bit risky with the post. So she wants to buy it online but reserve it in store, in her local Heidelberg store, to collect it later that day. When she leaves work, she can stop by, pick it up, dealt with. Now, how is she actually going to know how many items of this vacuum cleaner are available in any given store? Well, online, there's usually an indication. This is typical 
in any web store will give the customer an availability check, some kind of indicator. They can then see, is it available in the central warehouse for shipping to home? Is it available and in what number in their local stores? So Heidelberg, for example, is closest for her, but Mannheim is also neighboring. She could manage that. So here she might have checked, okay, it's looking rather dodgy at the central warehouse. It's out of stock already. Heidelberg, well, if she wants to collect it later, she'd better reserve now. And this is where real-time sales can again help us. If you remember our previous example, if we only knew about the stocks as ERP knows about them, the gray lines here, we'd have to make a best guess during the day. The web store would only know that the store in Heidelberg has 100 units at start of day and would receive a further 50. It wouldn't actually know how well the sales are doing. It would have to make a guess. And in this case, we'd have to work on projections. We'd have to assume, say, that we sell 80% of our stock, so we'd only allow 20% to be reserved. This would be, what? 20% plus another 10, 20 plus another 10, 30. Okay, we'd let them reserve 30 and the web store would count this off. However, this is where the problem of reality strikes us. This particular vacuum cleaner is doing far better than we anticipated. Were we to allow customers like Laura to reserve 30 units, in the vain hope they could collect this after work, they would be sadly disappointed. Unless we had a very good reservation system where we quickly get staff somehow in the stores to rapidly put them to one side. But as we approach, if you see 5 p.m., when we actually run out of stock, if they hadn't reserved before 4 p.m., they'd have been out of luck. So the 30 would have been completely misleading. Equally, if we weren't to have done this, if we were to have played it completely safe and said we allow people to reserve zero items in the store because 150 is too risky, 20% is chancing it because we have no idea what sales are, we'd have to assume 20% of 200, in which case, sorry, no, we don't have the stock to allow for that. In this case, had we not had such a good first day of sales, we'd have failed to sell anything to any of our online customers. We'd have turned them away. They'd have either bought it from another online retailer or bought it from another brick and mortar store. In fact, we might have turned them away completely and next time they just wouldn't bother with us. So, real-time sales. In the case of online reservations, here, we could make 12 o'clock, 12 p.m. midday. Laura is logging on. She wishes to reserve one robotic vacuum cleaner. Had we got a nice means in place with which we can support Laura in doing this, great. We can help her through the reservation process and we can say instead that we assume a small number of these items are in people's shopping baskets at any one time. We can go with a much lower level of safety stock because we have visibility. We know how much the store has sold and we only need to account for those items which are currently on their way to the checkout or which our store personnel won't have time to quickly grab off the shelves and put to one side. Let us say 10 units. That sounds safe. In this case, Laura logs on, and we can actually show that although sh stocks are vanishing fast, we have 50 units in stock, and we'll let her reserve one quite happily. In this case, again, we don't warn Laura that we're running out of stock until 3 p.m. At this point, it's getting too risky with our safety stock. 
and so at 4 p.m despite still having some stock left we can pull the plug and warn our customers that we're out of stock so in this case online omnichannel we can help our brick and mortar customers buy and reserve things which we have and which they can then take home with them later so to sum up if you have a conventional system article availability is a best guess it's not particularly accurate because it can't be we won't know what's been happening during the day until the next day and that's too late so we end up either denying sales to our customers and losing out which impacts our margins or we risk overselling we risk selling things to our customers they can't actually collect and maybe that's even worse but with the car platform we've got the inventory visibility we need so our safety margins can be cut back and we can make sales we would otherwise risk losing out on and indeed the car platform has got a feature which supports doing just this it's called the omnichannel article availability and that lets us with an online store an e-com platform use car to get an idea of how much is in store at any one time in our local stores to support us in reserving an item that we have shown a customer is available and then walking them through the checkout process but let me get to that in a second first i should uh, explain how is car actually doing all this well car itself is an sap module which is dedicated to providing this kind of information car brings all customer activities together from all channels you have and presents them in a unified view it integrates deeply with your sap erp retail platform ideally that would be s4 hana nowadays but if you have an older ecc not a worry car will integrate perfectly happily with it and give you the high speed in memory analytics you're currently missing out on it can also integrate with your points of sales to acquire your retail sales as they're happening in real time in so doing it is supplanting your older pos dm with s4 hana your erp becomes the primary source of all master data concerning your organization so any articles you have any stores you have your entire organizational hierarchy will be read live from your erp system and become immediately available on the car platform for analytics equally the same goes for any transactions that your erp system is processing the moment you have a sales order you have a billing document you have material movements we know about them in car so we can immediately see what are the inventory levels that erp knows admittedly it's not completely real time there'll be a few seconds in between but who'd notice so this is where car can enhance your erp investments immediately because you can have live strategic and operational reporting on your erp data whether or not you already have it the other side of the coin though and this is where the real-time aspect comes in for sales is that car comes with the pos inbound processing engine that is the latest version of sap's well-known pos dm which captures sales transactions from your pos systems and in this case the in-memory power of car bear in mind car is actually based on the hana appliance so it can manage this with a real-time in-memory database behind it it can acquire sales transactions 
every few seconds as they take place. Now, we're not going to stage these immediately to our S4 system for the simple reason that we need, as we've always needed to, we need to check them. We need to make sure that these receipts are correct. We need to audit them. We need to make sure that these are articles that exist, that we don't have duplicates which have been due to a miscommunication forwarded to us, that there haven't been typing mistakes at the cash at the tills. All of these things can happen. So we'll collect them, collate them, and then hand them to our ERP systems at the end of the day in a bundle for processing them. But the thing is, we don't actually need to do that to have real-time visibility. The car platform can, at the same time as receiving these sales, simply record them in car. And if we know a sale has taken place, this particular robotic vacuum cleaner has been sold at this time in this store, then we know that this store has one less robotic vacuum cleaner in stock. And this is what CAR is doing. This very simple calculation is what gives us the real-time inventory visibility. ERP doesn't know we've made the sale yet. It doesn't know yet that the stocks have gone down, but CAR can perform this calculation and make that information available to us. And this is indeed what happens with our in-stock availability. CAR is recording the POS data as it's coming in. CAR knows about the ERP stock we have and the inventory visibility calculation can run to give us a real-time view of what the store inventory must be and take into account that we'll have stock from other sources such as with our DC ATP runs, we can then present this as our omni-channel availability because we're bringing together for the web platform the stocks it has, the web platform stocks would be on the ERP system or on the DCs, we'd have a real-time store inventory which we're calculating with the help of the pipe system and so we can present the total stock of any article in any store at any one time and in any channel outlet which could be a different system retail which is usually a different system ecom whatever and this same process can happen with the online article availability so here we can actually do this omni channel Supposing we have got an e-com platform. Now, uh, this could be SAP Hybris. Hybris integrates very well with SAP CAR, but it doesn't have to be Hybris. The interfaces we're talking about here and the APIs, they're fairly agnostic. We can use these with any other online platform. Hybris is the most convenient for integration, but it's perfectly straightforward to do the same thing with your existing e-com platform. So CAR can again make its availability check through knowing what store stocks are, what DC stocks are, what vendor stock might be, and present this at any one time to the platform. Now, usually the platform just needs to make a rough query, a quick aggregated run of what do we have to the nearest 10 or 20 units. These are for the indicators we see in the web store. This doesn't take particularly much computation, so it's quick enough to do. We're not actually doing the availability check yet. This at the level of article at the, the level of the latest seconds worth of data we have across all stores and channels is much more computationally intensive if we were to do this for all articles we sell, all three million of them, across all stores we have, all 200 of them, 
within the last few hours, yes, you see what I mean? It's an awful lot of data. Car is fast, but we don't need to go mad. We really just need to check this for the items the customer wishes to reserve now or which they just placed in their basket. So three articles in a handful of stores, all of them, that can be done instantaneously. The customer won't even realize the computation that's behind this. They don't see that take place. It's effectively refresh, it's there. And so during the checkout process, the OAA system can again support by doing a temporary reservation. In this instance, yes, of course, it's going to support the store personnel in whichever store they're trying to reserve it from to actually find the item, put it to one side, check it off, let us know that they've reserved it for us. And the web store itself, because of course it has its own stock reserved for it, anything it reserves is automatically not available. But car itself, the moment something's in the basket, the moment something's being checked out, these items will vanish from the omni-channel inventory visibility reports. For the simple reason, car knows someone is going to buy them. Therefore, the item hasn't been sold yet, but we're not going to show it as being available. And indeed, once the transaction takes place, ERP knows about it and stock is in reality deducted. Now, you're probably thinking this is all well and good, but how does this look in real life? Well, we at Westernacher have our own dedicated demo system for you. And if you're interested, we'd be only too happy to show you how some of these things I've been talking about look like in reality. So we can take a look at um, our organization. We've got a much simpler setup, but it's pretty much the same thing as I've been talking about earlier. We have an electronics retailer. They have stores around the country. They have different channels. And we, as a retailer, are keen to find out what's going on in our different cities. We wish to compare how our sales are doing. We want like to find out, for example, how our particular items selling in our outlets compare to our stores. Some items are bigger sellers there, some in others. And in fact, when it comes to sales analyses, we might wish to find out what are our top five best sellers today or last month. Which particular product groups are the ones we should be focusing on? What for a given product group are the intraday, bear in mind a car can work from second to second, sales patterns? Or in fact, when it comes to profitability, comparing outlet to retail channel, which are the important items for us there? And again, we can, with sufficient history, take a look at the seasonality, which we can use to drive our forecasting. We can recognize patterns that take place from week to week and throughout the year on particular days. And if there's a particular example that interests you, we'd be only too happy to look into it further and present you with a real hands-on experience of what it would mean in your own reports. So please start your own journey now with Westenacher and SAP Customer Activity Repository. And if you want to know more, just reach out to us. Drop us a line via LinkedIn, Zing, or in fact, now you have our email addresses and we're only too happy to answer your questions. So let me find out if we have anything that I can help you with now. Well, one question which has come in from the floor 
is to do with the replenishment runs I was talking about earlier. The question being, what is the advantage of car for retailers who can't do a replenishment during the day? So if you recall, I'd given us the example of a retailer who had a replenishment run at midday. Now suppose you don't have this, you are completely reliant upon your early morning delivery from your local distribution center. Well, before you had SAP car, maybe the second replenishment run wouldn't have done you any good because you wouldn't have known what your sales were. And without knowing your sales during the day, you'd still have been working with the same guesses that you'd been using to make your initial replenishment run first thing in the morning. So maybe now if you have SAP car and you don't have a second replenishment run, you might have a good reason to figure out one and to put something like that in place. Maybe so that you can, like our electronics retailer in Heidelberg, take advantage of the evening crowds. Alternatively, with the help of SAP car, we might be able to do a little bit more. We might be able to show precisely what the pattern had been in time for our teams at head office to work out new replenishment schedules for the next day, rather than have to wait for another day entirely. So, whilst we still have any other questions open, please feel free. If not, thank you for joining us. If anything occurs to you in the next few days, please feel free to write in to us and we'll get back to you. The webinar itself has been recorded. So if you want to look at it again, it's available on our YouTube channel or through the links you already have. Thank you and have a good rest of the day.